Last week we did an episode on the top five 30 footers in my mind and while we covered some amazing boats in that 30 foot range we missed one and a lot of you called me out for it in the comments we missed what some folks consider to be the quintessential 30 footer in that reasonably priced sort of category but me we missed it for a reason a few reasons actually this week on everything you need to know we're talking about the cnc 30. First, I want to apologize that this boat wasn't on my list last week. I know it's a favorite and it has a cult following, and rightfully so, but the CNC 30 can't be summed up in a snippet of two minutes of some other video that we talked about a bunch of other boats through. The 30 is more than that. It's more complicated than that, and it's more deserving of the airtime to really outline what this boat is and why. We have two CNC 30s in my club, and I do have experience with them, and they certainly do have a great story. The problem with covering the 30 in two minutes is that it isn't just one boat. It's more like three or four boats, depending on how you look at it. Uh, and are we talking about the Mark I CNC 30, which is a lot like my boat? Uh, it has very 70s-ness about it. Uh, it's everything you'd expect from a CNC when they started building it in the early 70s. Or we might talk about the CNC 30 Mark II. Um, this is, uh, it's sort of got a different spin to it. It's a little bit more Catalina-ish, uh, if I dare say. It has molded headliners and aft cabins. Or are we talking about Formula One? Are we talking about the race version of the CNC 30? Because in 2017, they started building a one design CNC 30, which is basically just a rocket ship. My point here is these three boats may carry the CNC 30 nameplate, but make no mistakes, they are three very different boats for three very different purposes. Um, while they're all related through that nameplate, they aren't similar enough to be called sisters. The other reason I didn't talk about the 30 last week that I got a lot of criticism for was because I talked about the 27 instead, and a lot of people didn't like that. But the 27 is actually where it all started. They made the 27 first. They made more of them, and they were more popular than the 30. And the 30 was essentially just a bigger version of the 27. And don't take my word for that. That's straight from the designer's mouth. We can't talk about the 30 without first talking about its little brother. Now don't think I don't have love for the 30 because I do. We just had to show our respect to the 27 because that's really where it all starts. So let's go over the 30 and I think we're going to talk about mostly the one that you wanted us to talk about in the comments, which I'm going to go ahead and assume that is the Mark 1 CNC 30. The first 30 started out in the early 70s and was designed by Cuthbertson and Cassian. You may remember them from the CNC episode that we did previously that you can see right here. She was drawn as a 30 footer with a 25 foot waterline, which is sort of the way we did things at the time. She came in at 8,000 pounds, which was sort of middle of the road weight for a 30 footer in that era. It was a masthead sloop as everything tended to be back then, if it wasn't a catch. Uh, and had a five foot fin under her belly. You could also get a shoal draft needing just over four feet of water if that's what you wanted. The Mark I is a cult classic at this point. In an interview with the designer, Robert Ball, he said the CNC 30 was my first lines drawing, but it was Big George telling me what to do the whole time. That'd be George Cuthbertson, uh, one of the C's in CNC. Um, the design was very much a development of the 27. Once we started being able to actually compare the stability of the different boats we made, it turned out that the 30 was the most stable boat we ever did. He goes on to say that, listening to the owners over the years, the boat is stable and tough, parentheses, indestructible, and will last forever. Some pretty glowing reviews, and this boat deserves it. CNC built the 30 to last and be very comfortable as a cruiser for its day. While it may be called a racer cruiser from time to time, it's much more of a cruiser first. And one example of this is a lot of them that were fitted with a keel that was more swept back, which sacrificed some of its upwind performance in favor of a little bit faster speeds off the wind or when reaching. Is a cruising boat. Now you could get the 30 with a tiller or you could get it with a wheel and the cockpit easily sits six people comfortably for sundowners. Uh, in fact, the boat that we use after racing that everybody sort of gathers on to have the post-race argument is a CNC 30. On the inside of the 30, you do get standing headroom, but you don't get a quarter berth. And you get a walk-through head, which is, I mean, it's pretty common for the era and the size is reasonable. And you get a decent-sized V-berth that'll sleep two people. 
The salon is typical drop-down dinette on the port side and a bench on the starboard. Something to watch if you're looking to buy one of these things. Over the production years, um, the rudder and the rudder post design, it changed a few times. So if you're looking for help with the rudder or rudder post or stuffing box on your CNC 30, you may need to figure out exactly which rudder you have before you go and ask for help. One of the really cool things about the Mark I, however, is that every single one of them was made in the same factory by the same people. Uh, it's about 250 people in all, but all the same people, the same factory, and it was in Canada. The Mark I started out with an Atomic IV, the age-old little Atomic IV that every single boat had back in the day, but it did get diesel options later in life. And there's no real documentation of tankage because the fuel and water tankage changed so much over the evolution of the design. So should you buy a Mark I 30 footer? In short, I think the answer is yes, if it's what you're looking for. Uh, we have two of them in my club, and one of them I race against every Thursday night, and it performs very, very well, and it has a fantastic captain, which probably has a lot to do with it. The Mark I, though, is like a lot of any boat designed in the 70s and 80s. It's dark wood, small windows, so it gets that 80s sailboat cave feeling that we've talked about previously, kind of dark on the inside in the cabin once you board it up for the night. You do get an extremely well-built solid 30-footer for a really good price if you're buying one right now. It's a club racer, it's a weekender, it's a boat that has been to the Caribbean on more than one example. I found them on YouTube. Um, as long as the deck core is dry-ish, I mean, I would forgive a couple of soft spots, um, but I wouldn't hesitate to spend 10 grand on one of these very exceptional boats. Lady K Sailing is brought to you by patrons, uh, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to make this whole channel possible. I want to give a big shout out to this week's newest patrons. We have Bridger, Joseph, Jeff, Keith, and William. Thank you so much, guys, for joining the team. Okay, so we have the Mark I understood, but when it comes to the Mark II, it really is a different boat. It was designed by a different person, and they started stamping them out in 1988. So it's a much more 90s-ish feeling boat. Think Catalina, like I said earlier. On the Mark II, we got 300 pounds heavier, so now we're up to 8,300 pounds with a deeper winged keel, almost six feet now, and the Scholier option was just four and a half feet, still deeper. We also got a diesel right out of the box and some bigger tanks. We got 33 gallons for fuel, 53 gallons for fresh water. This was the cruiser for sure. While the Mark I lacked even a quarter berth in its original design, the Mark II gave us a proper aft cabin with a door. We also got a proper head with shower moved aft. Instead of being up by the V-berth, it was placed back beside the companionway. And you see what I mean by being more Catalina-ish? This is a very Catalina thing to do. Forward, gone is the traditional drop dinette. It's replaced with a C-shaped dining area, which is much larger and nicer. Um, and then, of course, the bench to starboard. Forward from there, we get the traditional hanging locker and then a pretty comfortable V-berth that you can sleep two people in. Um, as comfortable as it gets on a 30-footer anyway. So if you want a sub $10,000 boat that you're going to race occasionally, you're going to weekend on it, then the Mark I is an awesome choice. If you need more creature comfort and more space and a bit more modern, chances are you're spending a bit more on jumping onto a Mark II. The Mark II looks a lot more 90s-ish. It's got tinted plexiglass windows. Um, it's got that CNC sort of signature, round, more rounded coach top. It looks newer. It looks more modern. Uh, and you can usually find one for under 20 grand. Which leads us to the boat that is way, way different than its predecessors. In 2017, CNC started to make the 30 nameplate a different boat, and they created a purebred, purpose built rocket ship with one goal to win races, no compromises. The CNC 31 design was designed by Mark Mills and made of vinyl ester e glass with foam core. She gets a retractable bowsprit so you can run the big code zero sails and all that stuff and only weighs in at 4,000 pounds, which is Olsen and J-Boat race territory. The dagger board is carbon fiber with a lead bulb at the bottom and, of course, a carbon fiber rig. This ain't your granddaddy's CNC 30. So, conclusion. Is the CNC 30 the best 30-footer out there? Should it have been on my list of the top five 30-footers in my mind? My per personal feelings are probably... Um, or very likely might be the best 30-footer out there. It should definitely be on your list if you're 30-footer shopping. Um, I was searching around the internet, too, for boats for sale, as we do when we're bored in the winter, and I found a lot of Mark 1s sort of all over the East Coast and the Great Lakes for sale for a lot less than 10 grand. but I'd really want to inspect these boats inch by inch because of their age. A good one, 10 grand all day long, no problem. I found a lot of Mark 2s as well for 
a little bit more money looking around the $20,000 area, area because they are essentially 90s boats, which is a lot more friendly toward the comfort and ease of use area. Now the Mark II isn't super performance oriented, but everything's always a trade-off. So would I buy a CNC 30 Mark I or Mark II? Absolutely yes. Would you? That's it for this week, guys. If you liked the episode, please give it a thumbs up. It helps with the YouTube algorithm witchcraft. Uh, if you want your boat on an episode of Everything You Need to Know, leave it down in the comments. I will see you guys next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.